Well, hello, everybody. How is everyone doing out there? I know I always ask that in the beginning of my videos, but the reason I do is because I feel these huge shifts in the energy. 2023 in itself has been crazy. Like, I wouldn't want to relive this year if I had to. But I'm feeling that light at the end of the tunnel. Literally, the full moon lunar eclipse was Saturday. These past two days, I have felt a complete change in the energy, a complete shift. It's almost like we're, we stepped out of the karma, like working through our karma, doing this healing. And now we're stepping into the Dharma where we have that good karma. We have that, you know, you put in the work, you're doing this healing and you're seeing, having those epiphanies after your dark nights and you're really integrating it and changing and choosing to change instead of give in to your lower nature. And sometimes we're unconsciously giving in to our lower nature. We don't even recognize that we're doing it because it's this pattern that we've done, you know, and in, in, uh, played through and looped through our entire lives. And so when you become conscious of it, which how do you do that? You go through dark moments. You have to be sent these lessons. This isn't the universe trying to punish you. It's actually trying to give you a gift so you can come to that epiphany like, oh shit, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to repeat that cycle or that pattern that I've been repeating that I thought was normal or I thought it's just a part of my personality. And that's just it. That's that shift in the energy is us going from operating from a unconsciously from a place of ego even if you've been on your spiritual journey for years, there's still aspects of you that are operating from that consciousness, right? And shifting into this space of being conscious of those patterns and then choosing to make a different, have a different response in XYZ scenario. And it's going to be like the same pattern showing up, but different situations that are able to bring that pattern up. That's the universe giving you a gift to be like, hey, you want to look at this a little differently? Do you want to change to become a better person? Do you want to walk with integrity? Do you want to like, yeah, you always have kind of responded in that way instead of saying, oh, that's just my personality. You let go of that identity. And I think that's what where a lot of people struggle is like we're so attached to that old identity of who we are. And instead of embracing like what we're becoming, and stepping into mission and, and being humble enough to be like, yeah, maybe I know bits and pieces of my mission, but I'm just going to leave it to the universe, leave it to God to bring what it is going to be in, in each given moment. So we're not always just reaching externally to feel like we're good enough. We know that we're good enough right now. We have the tools we need right now. We're exactly where we need to be right now. Where can you see the gift? Where can you find gratitude and really embody the Dharma and embrace it because you deserve it? And ultimately, if you're still sinking into that egoic um, response or pattern, there's something inside of you that says, I don't deserve this dharma i don't deserve this there's some deep seated trauma or whatever it is for you you know what it is for you right and it can hold you back a little it can keep you in the um quicksand but what i felt for wh whoever the collective is that follows me in general is that there was this shift there was this shift in the month of october huge shift because if you notice it has been turbulent it has been insane all this year. And then all of a sudden we're closing this eclipse cycle, which I believe started in 2021. And all the epiphanies are coming. All of a sudden you feel this weight lifted off of you of these things that have been worrying you, which kind of makes me want to flow into the first, the download that I got last night. Cause there was this actually posted on the stories of my Instagram. If you want my Instagram account, it's below this video. I post it below all, all my information below all the videos that I uh, put on YouTube. But anyway, somebody had posted something and it was something about like, why are we worrying about the things that God has already taken care of? And so as soon as I read that, <laughs> this download came to me to share, not just on there, but with everybody, because it's the truth. And sometimes we're so hard on ourselves that we're like thinking we're messing up. We're thinking we're missing the boat to 5D or we're missing the boat on our ascension journey or we're just repeating another pattern because we have this 
unworthiness in us. So when I read this quote that had to do with like, what are you worried about? Like the universe already has you. Like, what are you worried about? This is what came up for me. I said, I used to think that I had to strong arm myself through life. Connecting with spirit brought me to a space beyond faith into knowing that it's all working out for me, no matter what it seems in the 3D. The epiphanies that come after the dark moments are the biggest gifts of all. We have to fall in order to rise. Remember that when you're on the brink during a dark night. And that's just it. Like We think every single time something bad comes up that it's like we're messing up. But it's really not. It's not. It, we're exactly where we need to be in that moment because the universe is trying to show you something that will give you the opportunity to expand. And in those moments, it is so hard to find the gift because the, the focus is on whatever it is that's worrying you, whatever the negative thing is, whatever the thing is at work, whatever the thing is in your marriage or whatever the thing is with as a parent, or maybe you had to go to court for something like whatever the drama is in your life, you think it's life just happening to you, right? But it's not that at all. It's literally the universe saying, look at this. What is it trying to show you about you? Because we always want to blame our boss, our coworker, our <laughs> partner. Um, whatever the circumstances is, we want to blame when we're an ego. And we want to go into victim mode. And that just sucks you into that pattern and looping. And when you can really be like, wow, what is this? This is actually a blessing. I just have to find, I have to see where that blessing is. And in order to do that, you have to open up your heart and be like, I am divinely loved and guided. So what in this situation is divine love and guidance? And be humble enough to be like, okay, this is something about me and how I'm responding to life. And that's like, that is the healing work. That is the integration because we can take in all this information, but what are we going to do with it? If you don't do anything with it, it's, it really doesn't do you much good. What's the point of knowing all of these things spiritually if you're not going to actually put it into action in, your, in every single moment of your life? How can I walk with integrity? How can I connect to spirit? How can I impact those around me um, in a beautiful way, just by being me. I don't have to be extra. I'm just being authentic. And it gives others that permission to be authentic too. Because you ever notice people like kind of walk around and they're so worried about how they look or like how, what they said, or like, there's always like this paranoia you can see in people's energy. Not always, but a lot of cases, you can see the insecurities. They wear them on their sleeves. They're afraid to be who they are or they change like a chameleon with each person they're with in order to satisfy the other person's ego, in order to feel like they're accepted and loved. So many people walk around with these unworthiness wounds and they think they're confident. They think they're all right. They think they're doing good. And it's only according to the matrix's standards that is totally operating from the ego, from the, the service to self, right? And when I say that, that means you walk around not caring how you impact what's around you. That isn't, that's a lack of integrity. That's service to self. It doesn't matter about anything but me. And like, that's what I try to talk about. There's a difference between self-care and an overflowing cup and service to self. Because when your cup is overflowing, it's because you're getting your uh, emotional fulfillment through service, through, and sometimes that service is to yourself so you can raise your own frequency. But that's not about going to get your nail done or drinking with the girls or, you know, whatever that external thing, you're like material things, whatever that external thing is that you're reaching for that thinks that you think is going to fill your cup or satisfy you. Really, that's just uh, boosting your ego in some way. That's running away from sitting with yourself. Because when you sit with yourself, you become the observer and you're so much more aware of how you impact those around you to the point where you start to feel everything. 
You feel them, you feel you, you see how it's all interconnected, how you can just, you don't even have to touch somebody. You just walk in the same building as them and you can tap into the energy. You can tap into whatever. Sometimes if you're an empath, you can just, it, it's like, <sighs> If you're an empath, you have to have like boundaries on steroids because you're so sensitive. Somebody could drive their car past your house and you can feel their energetic field, right? So that's how sovereign you have to be inside of yourself in order to be able to operate in this matrix from a higher perspective, walking with integrity. Because um, like the more you expand, the more you raise your vibration, the more that things that don't align with that higher expansion that you've come into will be intolerable. And so once you get to the point where you're, 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 you've done this work, you've cleared a lot of it, you're really connected to source, you have this personal relationship, right, with the universe, with spirit, with God, <laughs> however it resonates with you. And when you are in that space, it is almost impossible not to be conscious of how you impact what's around you because you know how powerful you are and you've stepped into these frequencies where you're able to make a big difference. And that's what the work is, is raising your vibrational frequency. But you start to understand what exactly is it for me that will do that? And when you start stepping into service and mission and your intention is pure, it's not just about making money or something like that. Your intentions are so pure. It's just like, I know I'm here for the light. Like all those material things, all these, all this stuff in the physical, it's so much more beyond that. And that is priority. That is like, if it doesn't feel good, I'm out, right? <laughs> But that shadow, you still work with it. But what do you do? You sit back, you observe, and you see the gift, right? So we stop and we'll, and our intuition gets to the point where we stop putting ourselves in uh, situations. We're not in alignment with situations that are going to bring down our frequency. Our body will reject it. Like the spirit, if you, if you come into contact with somebody and you, you know, you have a lesson to learn from them. And then that lesson's over. Spirit will expose something about them or expose something about the situation or expose something about the job or whatever it is. So then you're gone. It's over. You you know what you got your lesson. You're gone, right? Everything doesn't have to stay. That's why you say I'm like, um, what is it? I am part of everything but attached to nothing. Because it is that. It's like you really have to use your discernment on this journey to know like when do I stay and when do I go when has the lesson still being learned and when do I need to part ways it's it's really gnarly out there <laughs> it has been on my whole like experience I'm wondering if I should share the other half of this or make it a different video um I'm just gonna share it I'm just gonna share it okay I got this one this morning You've got to let people learn their lessons and you don't want for them to have to learn them with you. That's why boundaries are necessary. Awareness is also crucial so you can be conscious of the patterns in order to understand what kind of boundaries are needed. Usually space is required. That space is a gift because now that person can go learn their lessons with others and you are gifted the opportunity to identify why you at a subconscious level feel unworthy and, and a vibrational match to this type of dynamic. And I was going to make a separate twin flame video um, for this, but you know what? I'm just going to share it in this video and that's just fine because I feel um, guided to because this doesn't just apply to twin flames, but it does apply to the fact that when darkness comes up and we hold that judgment as of to what it means, like we blame ourselves for the darkness coming up. Well, it must be because I'm in this shitty frequency because I'm not doing the work and now I'm not going to ascend and you spiral into this crazy victimy darkness and it's like no wait it's Christmas open up the gift there's a gift there like see it you know it's so hard when you're swimming in it swimming in the in the trigger or whatever this scenario is that pops up for you that is the gift 
and it's gonna be the same way for others. So that's where this download comes in, okay? So <laughs> for example, if you're on this twin flame journey, they're, they need to learn too, just as much as you do, you both do. Okay, if you guys aren't in a harmonious union, you're both learning, still learning, okay? And in those situations, you want to let go and have that separation and be in your solitude so you can really come into that uh, awareness. You're not so distracted by a scenario or triggers or drama or whatever it is, and you're able to take all the information and sit with it and heal, so you have it, right? And they have to do the same. We have got to understand that we have to, like darkness is a critical part of this journey. There's no such thing as bad things never happening, okay? Because there is the polarities. It almost feels like once you keep expanding, you're going to realize that everything's a damn paradox. So why, it's like a big game, and we're taking it so seriously because we're attached to the identity of who we think we are in this 3D avatar. When really, like, it has nothing to do with that personal identity. We're just using it as a tool in order to help ourselves expand and others expand on our spirits on a conscious level. We're coming into the space where we're remembering who we are. That, if you remember who you are, you remember that you, uh, this isn't your first life, you're well on your way. So don't be down yourself because darkness comes along because those are just gifts so you can keep expanding. If you hit really dark nights of the soul, that's a great sign. That's a great sign. Most people are numbed out, distracted by life, refuse to leave situations, jobs, whatever it is that are holding them back. And they never hit super dark pits. So they're not experiencing expansion at the level that you are. And of course, if you're a light worker and you came here to uh, help others, we're the front runners. If you're already aware of spirituality at this point and you're like actually diving deep and integrating and not just trying to be woo woo, everything's positive all the time and you're doing the work, you are a front runner and you're here to assist others because they're come, they're going to be coming into this. If you haven't noticed, the energies are like pushing us into this. And we get to go first. So, like I was saying, most people are so distracted, so numbed out, so desperately clinging to the matrix and the identity that they have formed around who they are within it. That they're... Um, they can't even go to this deep, dark night of the soul because they're like hanging on... <laughs> to their life preserver that's falling off or their parachute that didn't quite come out right and they think that it's going to be uh they're never going to have to go there but they're going to have to go there and we're going to be the ones to help them through it why because we already went through it so when you're authentic and you can really you know share your experience go through the alchemy alchemy the healing all of that you're expanding and inadvertently helping those who are about to expand as well because this light is coming in and is not stopping. I don't know what the solar flare is gonna look like. I know that right now we're being blasted and blasted and blasted and that can only be for more and more preparation to expand. It's not gonna slow down. Just imagine like, I don't know how it's been for all of you, but in my experience, every single year, every single month, every time we are moving forward and it is flying, it is just, it's more and more, I don't want to say pressure, but it kind of feels that way to expand. To just expand and just, oh my gosh, like even people who have been doing this 20, 30 years are saying the same things like, whoa, I have never experienced anything like this before. And it just keeps turning up and turning up the pressure. And it's I feel like it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop because this is the great shift. This is the, the great awakening. This is everybody uh, having no choice but to heal or drown in your darkness. Um, that's the unfortunate truth is that some souls just aren't going to be able to handle it. And, and like... It sounds 
um, harsh from a 3D perspective, but from a 5D perspective, that's okay. That's okay. That's part of the cleansing of the earth. And there's nothing that we can do to try to stop that or control that. It's not for us to save every single soul. That it's okay for the souls to go back and reincarnate and try again. That could be part of their journey. And we have to stop trying to control other people's journeys. If you are a twin flame, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you ever even see that person again. It doesn't matter. That's not what the point of the whole thing was. The point was to expansion for you, unity, your divine masculine, divine feminine energies within yourself coming together, coming in this divine union within yourself in order to come on to mission. So whether you have a union in the physical or not, it does not matter. The gift is granted. You had the experience. Will it probably happen if you're doing the work? Sure, yes. Does it matter? No. And that's the thing. You have to get into that energy where it's just like, I'm sitting here by myself and this is so much more than enough. And I can just feel myself every day expanding more into who I authentically am, unapologetically being that. Knowing that I will only, you know, accept like the most divine, loving, expanded connection that's connected to my mission. And if not, get out of my way. Because we have things to do here, right? Go learn your lesson. But right now I'm focused on what what I need to do in terms of expansion and um, emanating my light. And whatever that is for you, it doesn't have to be something grand and extravagant. Not everyone came here to be in the spotlight. It's like you you could be in the spotlight, but completely like not on a 3D perspective because your light is just beaming. Nobody's even around you. You're in the middle of a forest by yourself, but you're beaming and you're still in the spotlight because you're holding down that frequency for uh, thousands and thousands, millions of people who are holding that lower frequency. You're that balance. That's how one person just... Um, crazy connected in their frequency vibrating it at such a high level impacts thousands and thousands of people counterbalances that that's why we really have to come into this knowingness just how powerful we are because we are that's what we came here for we didn't come here for some like ooh lovey-dovey relationship i am so grateful that i am unconditionally loving in this twin flame dynamic that I came into and it doesn't matter what he does or how deep he sinks into ego or how much that heart I feel my ego feels like that's betrayal and all this stuff and it harms me it does not matter it was just trying to show me something it had nothing to do with Kelsey right Whoever this avatar is, your avatar, it doesn't have to do with that. It doesn't have to do with the relationship. It just has to do with you mirroring and showing each other how to walk right back home to yourself. Right back home to yourself. And then you'll start to realize what it really was for. And then you'll start to just organically start to fall into your mission work. Organically just fall into what self-care looks like for you. And your days will become like less stressful. Like that dharma is coming right now. That light at the end of the tunnel. Is it going to be like no darkness ever again? Of course not. But at the same time, yeah, actually it is. Because your perspective on the darkness when it comes up is different. So there is darkness, but there isn't at the same time. It's that paradox because your perspective of it has changed. Because you're like, whoa, there's a darkness, but it's a gift, right? That's the paradox. And that's what we have to realize on this journey every single day. Like, even when the crap comes up, it's like, damn, I already know what this is, <laughs> right? But um, that's what I had to share with everyone today. 
and um, my heart is so full. My heart is so full and I have like done so much healing this year. I'm very grateful. Would I want to relive it? No, but in the same breath, I'm grateful for it. And I know I'm not the only one that has been put through the ringer this year. And I just want you guys to know that I'm here for it. I'm here for you. And this is what I'm called to do. And honestly, I did not want to share this today. If I'm being completely authentic right now, I didn't want to share anything about Twin Flames because I'm in that space and separation where I don't give a crap. I know, like, I unconditionally love him. I know he's healing. I know he's going to do amazing and he's got it, right? But I don't want it to have anything to do with me and him. Like, I just don't even want to talk about Twin Flames because I'm in that, when you get into that space where you're like, shifting you sh you're shifting your into that that trinity where you come your divine masculine divine feminine comes into that union and you're in that energy within yourself it's like you're not thinking about the relationship you're just thinking about okay what is like let's how can i sink deeper into my mission how can i really emanate my light to help others and like the more I do that the more I become involved in my community which I've been doing lately the more my heart is expanding the more I feel like amazing about myself as a person I'm like damn like you've come so far look at you like how do you do it like I don't even know how I do it sometimes and that's just like and like even saying that aloud, it's like humble yourself Kelsey but no like screw that I'm not gonna downplay the fact that I've come so far and I'm proud of myself and we all have to look in the mirror and be proud be proud and not need to reach externally for a relationship or for something else to fulfill you and being good with what you came here to do and like sinking unapologetically into that because you're not distracted by any more of your ego's desires to be fulfilled externally. It's not about money. It's not about people seeing you in a certain light. It's not about anything material or in the 3D. It's all about love. It's all about connecting. It's all about when you are interacting you get so vulnerable. You give others the, the um, give them that red carpet to do the same. Give them that the permission. Not that they need, even need permission, but in this world, it's like we're so forced to conform that people feel like they can't be them because if they are, they won't be loved. If they're authentically themselves, then people won't accept them. Well, newsflash, people in the matrix probably won't accept you if you're not fully what they want you to be but it's not about them accepting you it's about you accepting you because once you start to accept yourself life becomes a lot better it becomes a lot more filled with joy and love and then you start doing things that you love to do and realizing like wow like I'm learning that I love to do whole new things that I never even knew about I'm actually like diving my feet into different things because I'm not so distracted by the outside world that's holding me down like an anchor and I barely got my head above the water and I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. And as long as everyone sees you smiling with your head peeking above the water, you know, you're good because everyone else thinks you're good. Screw that. It's not about everyone else. They're holding you down. They're holding you down. What do you want to do? Most people have never actually asked themselves that question or they think the answer to that question is something that's going to be desirable to the others looking in on them. It doesn't matter what people think. What matters is what you think. And I will continue to reiterate, reiterate that because it's the truth. So anyways, guys, I'm sorry. I said I go to wrap up a video and then I go on another tangent. But I love you. And um, yeah, I had to learn a lesson about not overworking. I had to learn it twice. I got slapped with that lesson this past month. So I will have more days off in November <laughs> via the fact spirit is uh, making sure of that. So anyways, I love you and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.